Nice. Oh, no. You know what Raymond would do if he caught us? Yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Of course I'm right. Stick with me, kid. I won't steer you wrong. Eloisa was the prettiest girl, not to others, but to you. Her luminous eyes shone brighter than the moon. The day you collared her for Fort Joy, you wept every tear you had. You never cried again. You twist your head around as the magisters haul you away. Your wife and two boys stand in the doorway, helpless. You commit their faces to memory one last time. Wendy cries out something to you. You tell yourself it was, I love you, or we'll wait for you. But the truth is, you didn't catch it. The farm recedes from view behind you. You stride past the chain sorcerers and climb onto the caravan without complaint. As you settle onto the bench, you offer Relic's blessings to the Magister Guard. He offers only a bleary-eyed stare of disinterest in return before shoving the chain sorcerers aboard. As you watch them cower, you cannot help but feel annoyance. After all, don't they know they're going to be saved? Warm red wine flows down your throat. The languor of a tavern evening soothes you. Suddenly, shrieks rend the night. The magisters have come! Warm red blood flows down your face.
Speak. A tale of cloaks and daggers and daredevilry. Are you up for it? Wonderful. She bows with thespian flair. Imagine a black room. It's been your room for years. You know it by touch more than sight, for it's always dark. And when I say always dark, I mean always dark. You're either in the room or in the box, for it's in the box that you travel. You're only let out at night, because you only hunt in the night, with the Master's voice in your ears urging you on. And after it's done, you lie down in the box once more, with wet hands and mad red thoughts. Sometimes it's best to let sleeping questions lie. The thing is, the box didn't break me, though I confess it taught me to hate. One night, I killed a scholar. With my needle through his fragile old skull, he fell headfirst upon his writing desk, blood mingling with spilt ink. It's when I saw the ink that timid thoughts of rebellion first bloomed. Back in my dark room, I dipped my needle that killed the scholar in his own ink and engraved his name in my skin. I'd remember him. I'd honor him with vengeance. His name was the first, but many more followed. Of course. She bears her left arm and shows you the name. You softly run your finger across it. Mindaran. He was Turishar, a keeper of stories. I'm sure he was loved by many. People like him, the beloved dead, they kept me going. Then, one day, it happened. A gush of wind, a sliver of light. Light! I hardly knew it for what it was. A simple oversight that comes with habit. A door, left slightly ajar, that was all I needed to feel a rush of blood, a thirst for liberation like never before. I tore at the shackles that kept me chained to the floor, iron thick as a smith's wrists. Of course they wouldn't budge, they never did before. But now, now that I saw the light, something welled up inside me, a raw and undeniable burst of power. The shackles broke, and next thing I knew, I was free. I stood alone outside the ruins of a fortress, snow-capped peaks all around me. But the sun, oh, the sun. I had risen as if from the grave, and she kissed me back to life. Ain't over yet, honey. And I was given my needle by the master. Guess I'm just sentimental like that. Fine, if it means that much to you. She draws her needle and holds it up between thumb and index finger. Go on. Ever so gently touch the tip. Barely have you touched the needle's pinpoint surface when a thick droplet of blood wells up from your fingertip. Sharp little minx, isn't she? 
Sibyl, this needle was forged in an altogether different world. It wasn't wrought upon a crude anvil hammered into shape with rough blows. No, it was cast with demon precision. It is absolutely priceless, and it's yours. The master's own words. And he was right. As an instrument of assassination, it's absolutely priceless. But one day soon, he'll find out just how much he overspent on his gifts for little old me. Just why this needle is a girl's best friend. One might say I'm a bit of a sucker for poetic justice. Didn't you hear, Malady? We're off to find the Meister. And the Master. As such, my first priority remains to find Roost. He is the pawn that will eventually topple the king. The kid is whistling an off-key tune as he strolls about shiftily. He raises an eyebrow at your approach, but says nothing. Ain't up to out. Just looking for someone. Seen a... a... Ben Mezd. Too bad. The kid shoves his hands in his pockets and ambles off, resuming his tuneless whistling. The kid is whistling an off-key tune as he strolls about. Be grateful that you don't feel the need. Work, work, work. That's all there was in Driftwood for a dwarf like you. Until you got involved in the anti-magister resistance. Then, the work was still there, but also purpose. Purpose worth dying for.
From the dark, you stare up at the thin slivers of light visible between the floorboards. Shadows ripple across the slivers, accompanied by heavy footsteps, magister footsteps. Wood creaks above your head. One of them has paused. Your breath catches in your throat as you wait for him to move along. But the hatch is suddenly yanked open. Light floods you, blinding and accusatory. You hear only one gruffly barked word before the hands seize you. Gotcha!
Rubbish.
rubbish. Did you expect a needle? In a flurry of feathers, she leaps up and pecks a small hole in your map. That's where they are. I went after my babies. I saw where they went. But they've changed so much, so much, much, much. Ah! Much! Bring them back! Ah! eggs did didn't do did you hear the eggs are gone gone for good no one to keep them warm no one to keep them safe One who's not a thief, right? Eggs? Find eggs? Eggs? Find eggs? ever think about welcome to off, driftwood like Barnby and Sam did hell no to get yourself in check boy I won't have you running off like Milson and Tully you'll just end up sliding down some void Vokan's gross gullet piece by piece the older looking magister notices your presence he wipes his grubby hands downward across his greaves as if to wipe away the grime but instead smears more dirt onto them halt scale skin what word do you bring His face goes pale, and his eyes open wide. The magister that greeted you remains stiff, as if enduring a harsh wind. The void woken come. Hush, Fedder. You may pass, Lizard. Dare say you'll be aching to leave before long anyway. But before you do, find Raymond, the white magister. He'll want to know what you've seen. Be quick, mind. He's set to sail any moment. He nods his head in the direction of the bridge, but offers no other instructions. As long as you stay put, you'll be safe. 
Ah, uh, are you sure? Them sorcerers from the caravan? They'd be daft to come back. And as long as there's no sorcerers, there's no void woken. You're fine as long as you don't go wandering. This again? Would I kill Lucian's second most charming son? The lizard hangs from the gibbet, her face blooded and her scales discolored. Her eyes are closed, but her tongue flickers as you approach. Welcome to Driftwood, God Woken. One bloody eye cracks open glittering gold appearing from beneath the swollen lid. Chased... <laughs> Chased you all the way here from Fort Joy, did they? Very well, then. Cut me down. There is work to be done. Or indeed you could stand there still as a boiled lobster. You seem to have mastered that look. The Meister bears her teeth, stained a deep pink by her blood, and growls. Malady is unfortunately mistaken. I cannot train you, but I can certainly help you on your path, as long as I am free of this rope. The lizard grimaces, shifting awkwardly as she dangles. I am in intense pain, Kin. You are either insufferably cruel or insufferably stupid. Be quick about it, before the Magister realizes their prize catch is about to slip through the net. What are you waiting for? Do it, damn you! If they find out what you are, you'll be blessed to end up hanging beside me. What? Where are you going? No, come back! Damn you! You... Ugh, poor dwarf. Do you even know what they've done to you? A Magister guard approaches. Behind her, on the gallows, two lizards. One in a Magister uniform hangs dead from her neck. The other hangs from her hands, still alive.
step away from the prisoner, Red Scales! That's internal order business. You'd do well to leave it alone. Let's just say Zeus and there was of help to sorcerers and leave it at that. She's hanging by her hands because the boss don't want her dead just yet. She's a tough one, Meister Seaver. She's a seeker and she's a bloody traitor. What have you heard? Have you heard that they killed our beloved Alexander? She was part of the order. Knew Alexander personally. Alexander trusted her, at least as far as you can trust her, you know, one of you. Anyway, to repay that trust, the Meister gave Alexander up to his enemies. She wasn't there when Alexander fell, but White Magister Raymond uncovered the truth. She's as guilty as any of them. And I reckon she got off lightly. I'd have had her flayed alive with a salted bullwhip. A fly buzzes around the dwarf's mutilated head. For a moment it lands, crawls across his open eye and takes off again. The silent watcher does not blink. know what they've done to you. Ugh, mating season. Again. If I have to deal with one more buck looking to court me, I'll take a chunk out of his ear. There's one unaffected egg behind them. Perhaps there's still a chance. Glory is mine.
into the dark with you. Put some space between us and this lunatic! There you are, little egg. She leaps up and grabs the egg with her foot, kicking it under her warm underbelly and settling down upon it contentedly. Shh, 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 shh. little peeper baby, Mama's here, warm and here with you again. She cocks her black eye up at you and winks. Thank you. Oh, ah! I have something for you, something I buried behind the coop. It's yours, it's yours! Unless some other scratchly poker found it first, of course. What's this? I found something.
Get yourself in check, boy. I won't have you running off like Milsent and Tully. You... The older looking... Port Elf, what word do you bring? Word of battle? Word of our Magister brothers and sisters? What can you tell us? The younger ones... F Avoid Woken... Hush, Fader. Be quick, man. He nods his head. As long as you stay put, you'll be safe. Ah, uh, are you sure? Them sorcerers from the caravan? They be dark to come back. And as long as there's no sorcerers, there's no void woken. You're fine as long as you don't go wandering. Junk. The silent monk's stitched lips are the color of sea ice. The expected happens. Nothing. The silent monk, like every other, has nothing to say. As long as you stay put, you'll be safe. Ah, uh, are you sure? Them sorcerers from the caravan? They'd be daft to come back. As long as there's no sorcerers, there's no void woken. You're fine as long as you don't go wandering. That's it. The barrels and the chests. On the double. Go on, you mute sacks of flesh. Put your backs into it. I'll not lose another day to the tide. The Lord Dread awaits. Its sails billow with Dallas's breath. I'll... The Magister stops barking orders. He sniffs the air like a predator turns to face you, the wolf eyeing the deer. You do not get to make that decision. That decision is mine. A good day? Let's talk about a good day. Tell me, have you ever been strung up by the hands? Your body swinging like a bell's clapper as your bones are being broken with cast iron rods? We do cruel things unto others and unto ourselves, because we must. He licks his lips. Dry flesh turns wet. See, I'd like to string you up too. Rack you with rods and leave you dangling over a puddle of your own blood and piss. Oh, no, 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 that won't do at all. Innocence is a mask that doesn't fit you. I'm very good at what I do, see? I don't even need a sauce hound yapping at my side. There was a whiff of something in the air when you approached. A current of filth, that is to say, sauce. Best convince me I was mistaken. He leans in closer and sniffs the air once more. Interesting. So I was mistaken. Must have been ambition I smelt on you, not the magic that dare not speak its name. Very well. In that case, we'll forego the gallows and turn straight to the hunt. No doubt a trustee of Dallas is champing at the bit to see some action. Seems peaceful here, doesn't it? A quiet day in a quiet town. One wouldn't think these drifting woods toss on dwarf troubled waters. But they do. Consider for a moment the dwarf. What is he? A mule? A beast of burden? But some defy that role. 
There are rats among them, dancing to their rat queen's tune. I've need of a rat catcher. Of course, I must depart post haste, but Julian here will stay behind and be a good little parrot. Ask and he will answer. Stay behind? But, but I've my orders, same as you. Dallas. Like I said, Julian is staying. And with that, I must be off. No hard feelings about the death threats, of course. How about we part shaking hands instead of stringing them up? How very heartwarming. One last thing. The Magisters here are diligent men and women. A stranger like you may run into uh, troubles with them. Should this happen, just wave this piece of parchment in their eager little faces. My signature will placate them without fail, I assure you. Adieu and good luck. The Lord Dread awaits. The use of the gallows, I pass on to you. The time has come, my stitched lip lovelies. We set sail. Get on board and man your stations. Left behind like a dog. Bah! Seven curses upon that ship. The Magister is rubbing the dirt off his robes. None the worse for wear, apparently, from the blast of magic that knocked him off his feet. You, the so-called friend of Dallas. I'd be whining and dining aboard the Lord Dread if it weren't for you. Your meddling in Magister affairs had better be worth it. A man of stature wouldn't be moored on a dock with no one but dead fish for company. But here I am and here you are. So, to business. Now answer me. Did you meet with a Magister caravan on your way into town? The hour's growing late and I'm beginning to worry something might have gone wrong. By the bishop's bones, you saw it! Out with it, man! What happened? Dwarves! The pox on those beardy devils! Raymond, that old goat! Always suspected there's more to the Driftwood Dwarves than meets the eye. Hate to admit it, but I think he may be right. Too many things have gone wrong along Reaper's Coast to attribute to bad luck. Magister ships sinking, weapons disappearing, and as you've seen, a caravan attacked and destroyed. Rumor has it the Dwarvian Queen herself is behind these acts of sabotage. That is what I want you to prove. There's a local thug. Lohar. He runs an operation out of his hideout beneath the Black Bull Tavern. I suspect this man of being a spy for his queen. It may be interesting to have a word with him. Find out what he's up to. Where I really want you to ferret around is Reaper's Bluffs, to the west of Driftwood. It's wild territory, remote and hostile, where I believe the dwarves may have set up a base of operations away from prying eyes. Should you find any such place, and better yet, proof that Lohar is working on behalf of Queen Justinia, you will be handsomely rewarded, I assure you. They've always been snakes in the grass. Cheap labor, sure, and hard workers too. Half of them are their queen's spies. Her eyes, her ears, her poison pouring hands. You know what Queen Justinia is like, surely. A tyrant and a master strategist to boot. In that case, go forth and let the hunt commence! <laughs>